in, in this section, uh, you are going to learn about uh, an economic interpretation of linear programming models, and this is called sensitivity analysis. In this section, we are going to describe how linear programming have, has an economic in interpretation. This analysis provides information about the impact of the objective function when there is a marginal change on the resource capacity. So let's, let's discuss this very important interpretation of linear programming. So when you solve a, a linear programming problem, uh, uh, when you are solving the, the, the problem, you will get information uh, not only about the, the values of the decision variables and the objective function, you will also get information that are related to the constraints and this information are called shadow prices and also called dual variables or marginal uh, values. And this information is very important and is critical for the um, uh, solution of uh, LP problems and also the economical interpretation that they have is very valuable. So the shadow price of a constraint associated with an optimal solution represent the change in the objective function value when you do a marginal change in, in the capacity of one constraint. Uh, there are shadow prices associated with the non-negative uh, constraints. And these shadow prices uh, of these uh, non-negativity constraints is what we previously called, called the reduced cost when we were explaining the simplex method. So just to give an example about shadow prices, suppose that the labor capacity is increased from 450 hours to 451 hours. So what will be the increase in the objective function value when we have this one unit of extra capacity? So we know that the optimal solution for the furniture problem was defined by the equation uh, of the mahogany constraint and by the equation of the labor uh, capacity. So if we solve this uh, system of equation where we have uh, 451 units of, of labor, we will get the, the following values of the decision variables. We will be building 24 Point sixteen chairs and 13.96 uh, tables. And the associated uh, revenue from this optimal solution will be $2,204. So if we take uh, the difference between this new optimal revenue uh, minus the original revenue that we, we got without the increase in the capacity, we see that this difference is equal to $4. So uh, the interpretation is that we can get $4 in increased revenue per hour of increase in labor capacity. And this is called the shadow price. Uh, the shadow price value of $4 remains constant over a range of values of the capacity. But the calculation of this range is beyond the scope of this course, so we are not going to, to, to do that here. We just warn you that this is valid of, over a certain range, not for any capacity value. Similarly, we can compute the shadow price of the mahogany constraint by, so by solving the following set of equations where we increase the capacity of mahogany by one unit and we keep the labor capacity by uh, the capacity that we had before, which is 450 hours. So when we solve the system of equation, the new, the new values of the decision variables are going to be to build 14.08 chairs and 23.88 tables. What is the revenue associated with this new optimal solution is going to be $2,201. So again, if we take the difference between this new optimal revenue respect to the original revenue, we see that we can get one extra dollar 
in revenue when we increase uh, the mahogany capacity by uh, one unit. And again, this number uh, remains constant over a certain range, but we are not going to explain how to calculate this range because it's not relevant to what we are doing here. Now, let's, let's see, let's, let's discuss the canonical form of, of this, the furniture problem when we have the basic variables x1 and x2. So as you remember, uh, when the basic variables are x1 and x2, basically we are going to build 14 uh, tables and we are going to build 24 chairs. The non-basic variables, h1 and h2, uh, are going to be equal to zero. This means that we are consuming all the capacity of mahogany and all the capacity of labor. And uh, with this uh, basic solution, uh, we are going to generate uh, $2,200. Uh, and we know that this solution is optimal because the reduced cost associated with the non-basic variables H1 and H2 are negative. So the reduced cost associated with the unused uh, mahogany capacity is minus one dollar. And uh, I mean uh, one dollar and the reduced uh, cost associated with the labor capacity is four dollars. Well, this is interesting, no? Because uh, basically in the canonical form related to the optimal uh, basic solution x1 and x2, the, the coefficients associated with the non-basic variables are really the, the shadow prices that we have identified. So this is very important. When we use the simplex method, we are using the, econo the uh, economic interpretation of what is the marginal value of the capacity that we have. And when we find the optimal solution, these marginal values or, or these uh, shadow prices basically um, represent the increase on, on the objective function value if we uh, increase the value of the capacity that we have for each resource. So, um, uh, again, the, the, the simplex method uh, tells us the information related to the shadow prices. And uh, as a matter of fact, this information about the shadow prices characterize when the when we have found the, the optimal solution. So uh, this is done automatically by the, the, the simple method. You don't need to, to do anything else to compute these, these values. So let's, let's use uh, Gurobi to see how we can retrieve the shadow prices associated with the uh, resource constraints. So recall, that to define the um, resource constraints, we use the, we use the add constraint method. And we call all these, con all these constraints are going to be stored in the object res. So what we can do is to use this for loop defined over the set of resources. And then as Gurobi with this uh, expression uh, resource r dot pi to check if the shadow price is greater than zero. And if, if, the, if it is, then we are going to uh, define uh, the name of the constraint or print the name of the constraint and then retrieve the value of the shadow price associated with resource. R. So the shadow price associated with the mahogany constraint is one dollar, as we have identified before, and the shadow price associated with the labor constraint is four dollars. And uh, let's let's uh, see how these uh, shadow prices can be helpful to make decisions 
about uh, production planning and things like that. So suppose that the, the R&D department of this uh, furniture factory says, hey, we can also build desks. And we can sell these desks if we build them at a price of $110. And if we build one desk, we are going to consume 15 units of mahogany and 20 units of labor. So now the question is uh, if we are going to build uh, these desks. So again, we are going to use uh, the Gurobi Python API to solve this new problem and see if we build uh, desks or not. So we are going to use the parameterized way of representing this problem. So we will use the product, uh, the multi dig function defined over the products, and we add the desk product um, with the, its price. And also we will update the, the dictionary related to the bomb. So we are going to tell uh, Gurobi that to build one desk, it requires 15 units of mahogany and to uh, also build one desk, it requires uh, 25 units of labor. So we will use the right method to, to see that we have the, the, the problem in memory properly represented and now we see that we have three decision variables. Make decision variable uh, of a desk with a price of $110 and the make variable is defined over the set of uh, resources. And then we use the optimize uh, method to solve the, this problem, and Gurobi gives us the following answer, which is the same as before. Build 14 tables and build 24 chairs, and we will get uh, $2,200 of revenue. So. It seems that building chairs is not profitable. Also, the shadow prices associated with mahogany and labor remains the same, $1 for mahogany and $4 for uh, labor. So let's see why it is not profitable to make uh, desks. And for these purposes, we are going to use the shadow prices. So the shadow prices associated with mahogany is $1, and the shadow prices of uh, labor is $4. So let's compute the opportunity cost of making one desk and compare it with the price of building one desk. If the opportunity cost of, of uh, building a chair is greater than the price, then it is not worth it. And, to, and to, to, make, to make the calculation of the opportunity cost, we can do it in the following way. So the shadow price associated with mahogany is $1. And to build a desk, we consume 15 units of mahogany. So the, the opportunity cost of building desks using mahogany is $15. And then... The shadow price associated with labor is $4, and we consume 25 hours when we are building a desk. So the total uh, opportunity cost uh, of consuming labor to build desk is going to be $100. So if we take the summation of these two terms, we know that the total opportunity cost of building desk is $115 which is greater than the price of the desk. That's why when we, you, we use linear programming, um, the engine told us, hey, let's not build desk because the opportunity cost of building, uh, of otherwise building desk and table uh, is, is, is better. So our resources are better utilized when we produce chairs and tables that, uh, that rather than producing desks. So in conclusion, uh, uh, when we invest resources to produce desks, otherwise used to produce chairs and table is not profitable. So we now see that the economic interpretation of, of uh, linear programming based on the shadow price is very useful to solve the problem and also to decide what is profitable or not when solving uh, a linear programming problem.
So that's all that we have for this section. Thank you.